about capoing, I did um, a, some videos a while back and I wanted to kind of update them a little bit. Um, I've got basically four reasons to capo, and I'm talking about acoustic guitar generally here. Uh, the first reason is to get out of bad keys. Um, I have keys that I consider my happy keys. I'm happy to be playing in the key of G and I'm happy to be playing in the key of D. Uh, A and E are also great and um, C is not bad, uh, but keys like B flat, A flat, E flat, F, those are not very good keys on acoustic guitar. Uh, for example, the key of F, you know, you've got an F bar chord, kind of cumbersome, and you've got the B flat chord, and the C chord has open strings in it, so there's a, there's a continuity issue for my ears, where when you have no open strings, everything's fretted, it's a darker sound. And then when you have when you have open strings, it kind of tends to brighten up. So it, that that contrast between having chords that are dark, you have the four chord, the five, the one chord in the key of F um, that are bar chords, and all of a sudden you go to the five chord and everything opens up. Not exactly the kind of continuity that I'm looking for. I, I would probably tend towards playing all bar chords if I were going to do that. Um, or I can capo, and in this case, like if I wanted to, if I'm if I want to. Um, uh, figure out what key to capo in. Um, if I'm in F, I could go up to G, but the problem is if I go up two frets um, to from F to G, I have to capo down two frets, which you can't do from an open position. You could capo at the 10th fret, but that would be really high. Um, so instead, I would capo in the I would capo down, I would transpose down three frets to D and capo up three frets to the third fret and play D shapes and that would be in the key of F. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll explain that again in a, few, uh, a more detailed um, video. We'll do some examples on that. This I'm just giving four reasons to capo. So again, you know, um, like before the, the intro I was playing was in B flat. Not a very good key on acoustic guitar, but you know, B flat is very, very easy at the third fret with the capo. It's just a G chord, and then F is just a D shape. And G minor is just an E minor shape, and E flat is just a C shape. So it's just super easy to play in the key of B flat when you capo at the third fret. Now, as far as learning those chords and learning how to transpose and everything, I don't transpose. In other words, I'm not thinking I'm in the key of D here. Okay, I'm actually, I, I do see that as an F chord because I know my fretboard well enough to know that if I were to play, that's a D, if I go up one fret, that's E flat, that's E, and then there's F. So I know that much. Um, and so basically what you could do if you wanted to play a song using a capo, um, you probably, if it's a simple song, you're probably only going to have four or five chords to memorize. Uh, you memorize them in open position, why not memorize them in some of the other positions. So in this in this position, in third position, the D shape would be an F chord, so that's F. The G shape would be a B flat chord, and the A shape would be a C chord. So you can just kind of quiz yourself, F, C, B flat, C, F, C. You're going to memorize that about as fast, and then if you, B minor is going to be a little, you know, a bar chord, that's going to be your D minor chord. Um, then E minor would be the G minor shape. So you know, G minor, F, F, C, G minor, B flat. You could, you'll eventually, if you just work on it for even just a few minutes, you'll have those chords memorized in that key. So you really won't need to transpose. You won't have to think twice when you're reading a chart. Um, a lot of players, what they'll do is they'll take a, a, a chart, and if it says F and B flat, they'll write D and G, and then those are the shapes they're playing. The only problem with doing that, and that's totally fine, it's kind of a shorthand. For one thing, you have to go through the whole chart and do that. You have to go through every chord and change the key in it. Uh, but the other problem is if you think, if you're playing an F, and you think you're in D, then you, if you go to do a lick, you're not in D, you're in F, and you forgot, and you're thinking D, and you go to do a lick, and you, it doesn't work, okay? Okay, so getting out of Getting out of bad keys, making it easier to play. See, that's the other thing. If it's easy to play, it's going to sound good. If it's difficult to play, you're just there's no way to make it sound good. It's just not going to happen. So you want it to sound really natural and free and flowing. So, okay, that's the number one reason to capo. Another reason to capo is to contrast with another guitar player 
or to contrast with another recording of yourself. So if you want to double yourself on a recording and say you're playing G to E minor C D, then I, what I might do is I might capo say at the fifth fret, and in that, then what I've done is I've I've gone uh, I'm going to transpose down to D. So I've gone up one, two, three, four, five half steps. So then I have to transpose from G down to D five, five, or yeah, five half steps. So now I'm, so I played G, E minor, C, D before. And those are the chords in the new key. And that would harmonize. If I were to do some kind of picking thing, like maybe do uh, something like this. like that and I did the same thing with the same chords it would be naturally harmonizing you would automatically be harmonizing with it so my second reason to capo is to contrast with another guitar all right a, uh, a third reason to capo okay sometimes you want to capo to get out of the timbre of the key that you're in in other words the key may have a big sound and you want to get away from that big sound. So let's say you're doing a, a real... You're doing a big, big... Uh, you want, you're trying to do a kind of an intimate song in the key of E, but E's kind of a big... Big grassy... Progression, or it's a big. The voicings for E are very open and ringy and everything like that. So let's say we want something a little more intimate. Well, then what I would do is a capo up two frets, uh, two half steps. So if I transpose down two half steps from E, go down two half steps would be D. So now I play D chord. much more intimate voicing for that type of playing. So, so the third reason the capo would be to change the timbre of the sound of the guitar, change your voicings to make it bigger or smaller, depending on which direction you want to go. And I have a fourth reason the capo is to create an effect. And now the, a, a keyboard player showed me this trick, and basically he told me to capo up really high, and then bring, use a thin pick, and then strum right up against the right up against the bridge. Kind of has a dulcimer, auto harp sound. Kind of a cool sound. And so you can just from it, the thinner, the thinner the pick, the better. The thinner the sound, the better. It's kind of an effect. So that's my four reasons to capo: getting out of bad keys, contrasting with another guitar player to change the timbre of the sound of the instrument, or to, for a special effect. Okay, I hope these help, and uh, God bless you. Go get a capo. I'm going to do a video and talk about the different types of capos, um, and that's in the future as well. And I'll talk more specifically about transposing. That one's coming too. Okay, God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.